Welcome to World History Channel. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Ilza Koch, born Margareta Ilza Kohler, was born in Dresden, Germany on September 22, 1906 to a factory foreman. Her childhood was completely unremarkable. Teachers noted her as being polite and happy. And at age 15, Koch entered accounting school. one of just a few educational opportunities for women at the time she began working as a bookkeeping clerk at a time when germany's economy was struggling to rebuild itself after world war 1 and in the early 1930s she and many of her friends joined the nazi party the party and hitler's ideology was attractive to germans first and foremost because it seemed to offer solutions to a myriad of difficulties the country faced after losing the great war In the beginning the Nazi party focused mainly on turning the German people against democracy specifically the Weimar Republic's first politicians which they felt was at the root of why they had lost the war Hitler was a compelling speaker and his promise to abolish the deeply unpopular Treaty of Versailles which demilitarized parts of the country then forced it to pay massive unaffordable reparations while trying to recover from the calamities of war appealed to many Germans who were struggling both with identity and making ends meet. Koch, who was already well aware of the economic climate, likely felt that the Nazi party would restore and perhaps even bolster the fraught economy. In any case, it was her involvement in the party that introduced her to her future husband, Karl Otto Koch. They were married in 1936. Ilse Koch arrived at Buchenwald in 1937 when her husband was assigned as the camp's commandant Koch jumped at the opportunity to become involved in her husband's work Her first order of business had been to use the money stolen from prisoners to construct a $62,000 around 1 million dollars in today's money indoor sports arena where she could ride her horses They lived in the largest villa on site which became known as the Villa Koch where some prisoners worked as servants the cocks lived lavishly and elsa's buchenwald lifestyle was privileged compared to that of her youth she created a rule that if any prisoner even looked at the commandant's wife they would be shot on the spot then she would walk around the camp deliberately dressed in very short skirts and tight sweaters and behave sexually around starved and tortured male prisoners if any of them became aroused he would be killed immediately Sometimes she would make them perform sexual activities on each other which would go on for hours until the inmates dropped dead from exhaustion. Ilse Koch was given the nickname the bitch of Buchenwald by the prisoners. She was a nymphomaniac and kept doctors and guards for lovers. Her husband was not only okay with this he was sexually open himself. There were also reports of orgies and threesomes held in a mansion for the SS officers and guards. Elsa Koch often took her horseback rides to the camps to scout out prisoners who had distinctive tattoos. The prisoner would be stripped of his or her, her skin before being incinerated, and Koch allegedly kept the skin on display in her home. She even had her light switches covered with thumbs wrenched away from prisoners. In 1941, Karl Otto was transferred to Lublin, where he helped establish the Mazdenek concentration and extermination camp. Elsa remained at Buchenwald however until August 24 1943 when she and Karl were arrested on orders of the SS corruption at the Buchenwald camp had sparked an investigation into the couple both were charged with private enrichment embezzlement and murder of prisoners the SS police court convicted Karl Otto in 1944 and he was later executed at Buchenwald Elsa was accused of habitually receiving stolen property Little evidence was proffered against her however Ilza was acquitted and was released She went on to live with her surviving family in Ludwigsburg where US authorities arrested her on June 30th 1945 Ilza was brought before the General Military Government Court for trial of war criminals in 1947 Interest in the trial was high at the suggestion of General Eisenhower a group of Newspaper reporters and US congressmen were flown in and given a tour of Buchenwald camp. Every major newspaper in America reported on Koch. 
Extra rows of seats had been installed in the courtroom to accommodate the crowds of reporters. While Cock was just one of the 31 accused, her presence garnered disproportionate attention. The prosecution presented documentary and physical evidence at the trial. A film made three or five days after the liberated camp came under the control of the U.S. Army, as well as two shrunken heads. In addition, prosecutors also delivered evidence by 10 witnesses. Witnesses recounted that any orders given by Ilza were to be obeyed as if they had been given by Carl in his official capacity as the commandant. Witnesses testified that Ilza often reported inmates to camp authorities for what she determined to be improper behavior, knowing as she did that these inmates would be severely punished. Two witnesses testified that Ilza told her husband that this dirty pig dared to look at me and then he beat that inmate so severely that it became necessary to carry him away while Ilza watched. A witness testified that Ilza told her husband, have a look at this dirty Jewish swine there, too lazy to work, I don't want to see him anymore, and that Carl then proceeded to kick him and severely flog him with a riding crop. A witness and a chaplain were digging a ditch and Ilza stood astride that ditch in a short skirt with no underwear and when they looked up at her, she beat them with her riding crop. Witnesses also alleged that Ilza had a collection of lampshades, photo albums, a briefcase and a pair of gloves in a house made from human skin. The evidence against Cock was extensive. That said, much of it was hearsay or common knowledge and not necessarily direct knowledge. Ilze took the stand in her own defence. The spirit of her testimony was that she was just a normal SS wife, innocent, taking care of her children and being a mother. She was sentenced to life imprisonment. On June 8, 1948, General Lucius D. Clay, the interim military governor of American Zone in Germany, reduced Ilze's term to four years on the grounds that there was no convincing evidence that she had selected inmates for extermination in order to secure tattooed skin or that she possessed any articles made of human skin. The sentence reduction became public knowledge on September 16, 1948. Koch was one of the 317 convicted war criminals who had this sentence commuted by Clay at that time out of the total 1,600 which were reviewed. Clay's biography later reported that he had called Koch a loathsome creature and that he received more abuse for reducing Koch's sentence than for anything else he did in Germany. West German authorities re-arrested Ilse Koch shortly after her release, resulting from Clay's commutation of her sentence. The second hearing opened on November 27, 1950. On January 15, 1951, a 111-page long decision was issued. Koch was not present in court when the verdict was rendered. She was convicted and received a sentence of life imprisonment. Koch was charged with instigating the murder of 45 prisoners, complicity in 19 other murders and one attempted murder. The situational context was substantially similar to the context that the Americans had prosecuted in the Daku proceedings. The charges, however, were different. They were brought under ordinary criminal law, not international law, as domesticated into national law. Furthermore, while at the 1947 trial, Koch was charged with crimes against foreigners committed after September 1, 1939. In the 1951 trial, she was charged with crimes allegedly committed against Austrians and Germans. The West German trial also addressed the allegations that Koch selected prisoners for their tattooed skin to be used in the making of articles. At least four witnesses testified that they had seen Koch select tattooed prisoners, who were then killed for their skin. Testimony came from witnesses who had been involved in the process of making lampshades from tattooed skin. For example, Gustav Wegerer, an Austrian political prisoner and pathologist, testified that Koch was seen in his work detail. The lampshade made of human skin was being made for her, and he heard her say that the people chosen for the lamp had not found favour with her. Joseph Ackerman, a political prisoner, and secretary of the camp doctor testified that he had delivered the lampshade to Ilza Koch at her birthday party. The lamp was allegedly made of a human foot and shin bone, and observers could see tattoos and nipples on the screen. 
that said the prosecution ultimately dropped all charges related thereto Ilse Koch committed suicide on September 1st 1967 at Aikek Women's Prison by hanging herself with a bed sheet it is reported that at the time she suffered from delusions and had become convinced that concentration camp survivors would abuse her in her cell Ilse Koch is buried in an unmarked grave in Aikek Cemetery